as champions of the light, forming in numbers and might. Keep the truth close and inside. Medicine and woman. Medicine man. Good evening. Welcome. It's a beautiful night in Chicago, and thank you for joining me tonight. You know, in my mind, the single greatest thought is our body's ability to heal itself. Just that thought alone is absolutely amazing. So we have to exalt our body temples. We have to revere and venerate our body temple to the next great level so we can truly regenerate, so we can get ourselves out of this chronicity, so we can heal all the chronic conditions, but it starts at the top. And so tonight we're talking about nutritional medicine and how we're using nutritional medicine and detoxification to reverse engineer the chronicity plaguing our age. So tonight we're putting the spotlight on the many reasons why your thyroid problem is not actually your thyroid. So wow, that's an interesting concept. I'm telling you that your thyroid problem isn't actually your thyroid. So you go, you have some of the more common, you know, uh, thyroid complaints such as anxiety, depression, low energy, fatigue, weight gain, uh, poor thinking, fuzzy thinking, and it's these symptoms that prompt you to go to your medical doctor. So when you go to your medical doctor, they'll run the routine blood test, and as they run the routine blood test, um, it may show aberrant thyroid hormone levels. Maybe TSH is high, maybe T3, T4 is low, maybe you show some thyroid antibodies and then they quickly diagnose you as you know most of the time it will be hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's uh, once in a while they may diagnose you on uh, hyperthyroid depending on you know the lab test or uh, maybe it's inconclusive and then they just diagnose you as being depressed and then they put you on levothyroxine, Armour, Synthroid, Naturethroid or worse yet they put you on an antidepressant because nothing really showed up. Now that the problem with that, and that's a problem, the problem is that's deception, that's fooling the body, it's not getting to the root of why the thyroid has become dysfunctional. So it's not touching the root, it's just addressing the symptom. And we want to get away from that paradigm, because that paradigm is really the root of why we have this chronicity. And so what we need to understand, now this is a concept, this is a very fundamental concept, that when we're talking about thyroid, we gotta understand that cortisol and thyroid are the two hormones that regulate all the energy on how the body uses sugar for metabolic energy. And it's those two hormones really are the balance in how we're burning the energy. And so when we're under stress, we're gonna be more burning cortisol, but when our physiology is more in harmony, we're gonna be burning, we're gonna be using the thyroid hormone to generate the energy. But in essence, cortisol and thyroid have to be in a nice homeostatic balance. And the take home message is that you can't look at hormones as one singular hormone. It's no such thing, it doesn't exist. We have to look at the whole hormonal system and to do that we have to look at the neuroendocrine system. So the neuro being our brain nervous system and the endocrine system being all the hormones in our body. So we gotta tie this in together. And it starts with the hypothalamus. So in our brain, the hypothalamus, um, that receives all the sensory information, whether thyroid, is ho whether thyroid is high or whether thyroid hormone is low. So let's say the hypothalamus detects that your thyroid hormone is low. It will send a signal to your pituitary, and then your pituitary will send a signal, hey, thyroid, make thyroxine, make thyroid hormone. Or in reverse, maybe the thyroid hormone is too high, your hypothalamus will detect that through the sensory innervation of the body, and that will tell the pituitary, 
uh, to slow down the thyroid gland. So this is all dictated by the neuroendocrine system by feedback mechanism. So we got to understand this feedback concept, whether we're talking about the sex hormones, the thyroid hormone, the pancreatic hormones, all hormones operate this. And again, the take home message is we can't look at one hormone in isolation. That would be a very sophomoric approach to looking at it. We, got, we can't have this myopic hormone approach. We got to look at the body as a whole. So when we're talking about the function of the hypothalamus, once we start to go on these drugs, we got to remember the hypothalamus is part of the limbic system tied into the basal ganglia, tied into the hippocampus, tied into um, the whole limbic brain, which is truly our spiritual, emotional, physical brain. It's tying it all in. Once we come in with the uh, pharmaceutical drugs, we throw this major receptor off. You know, that hypothalamus is the master switch. It's, it's grand central station taking all the information from our body and interpreting it and it's connected to the whole limbic system. And once we start coming in with these drugs, then we're going to have deviant patterns. We're not fixing anything with the drugs, but it's going to upset the whole hypo uh, the hypothalamus and the pituitary access. So this is why we want to really understand this whole hormonal connection and just not have this myopic view of our thyroid is off so let's just do replacement therapy and fix the thyroid. That doesn't work because the end result we're going to throw off the whole hypothalamus and the limbic brain. Now, what we need to understand is stress. Now, stress has many, uh, has three components to it. Stress can be emotional stress, chemical stress, or physical stress. The bottom line is the body doesn't care what the stress is. The biochemistry will react the same, whether it's a chemical stress, physical stress, or emotional stress. Doesn't, you know, delineate which one it is. The biochemistry will react to the stress. So we're, when we are under the stress, this is going to cause a very potent anti-inflammatory hormone, the most potent anti-inflammatory hormone, cortisol, and cortisol is going to, um, will go high and that will shut down the thyroid hormone. And so we're under this chronic stress. And so when you go to your doctor, does he ask you about your chemical stressors, your physical stressors, your emotional stressors? They don't. And so we need to understand that this cortisol, due to the stresses of life, are causing our thyroid hormone to go low. So if we can address the chemical, physical, and emotional stressors, then we have a better chance of understanding why our thyroid has become dysfunctional. You know, uh, 80 years ago, the pioneering uh, preeminent endocrinologist, Hans Soleil, talked about the stresses of life. And he mapped out how the body goes through the three phases of stress. And the beautiful thing about the hair tissue mineral analysis, we get to see it firsthand what level of stress we're under. And so when we're in the alarm stage, when the alarm bells ring, you know, that's going to cause, that's going to be an aldosterone response and sodium will spike. And that's a normal physiological response to stress. And that's going to cause our heart rate to go up. It's going to cause you know, our breathing to go up. It's going to divert the energy into the muscles. So it's not going to be focusing on digestion. It's not going to be focusing on growing hair. It's focusing on fight or flight. And so this is an important adaptive uh, energy and we can see this beautifully in the hair tissue mineral analysis of where the stress is. Now, let's say, you know, uh, you're a wild animal and you're being chased by the wolf or the tiger, you're going to go into this pattern. That's fight or flight. You're either going to be the dinner 
of that other animal chasing you or you're going to escape. Now if you escape, hopefully your body's going to go back into the resistance stage of stress where everything starts to balance out. But if you look at the animals in the wild, they know how to unwind, they know how to do breathing, they know how to stretch their spines to unwind from the traumatic stress of almost being killed. And so we can see these beautiful patterns uh, on the hair tissue test of what levels of stress we're under. And hopefully when we go from that, you know, alarm stage, we go into the resistance stage where the potassium, which is mostly a cortisol response. Remember, cortisol is an anti-inflammatory to put out the fire of inflammation. And so we see this pattern and we know that the adrenals are working, we know that we have a healthy response to stress. But what happens if we're under that chronic stress day in and day out? You know, the, the, the chemical stress, the heavy metals, the lead, the arsenic, the mercury, the cadmium, the emotional stresses, our fears, our worries, our anxiety, or what about, uh, you know, just the physical stresses of our, our aches, our pains, all these stresses start to deplete the mineral nutrients and we can see it in the blueprint of the mineral pattern. And this is when we go into burnout. And now when we're in the burnout pattern, because we're under this chronic stress, we know that's going to affect the thyroid hormone. So the thyroid starts to tank. And so maybe, you know, our low energy isn't because the thyroid has gone offline. It's because of the whole hormonal neuroendocrine function has been dysregulated due to the chronic stresses of the metals, of the chemicals, of uh, the emotional stresses and the physical stresses. So we got to look at how this stress affects the physiology. And when we go into this pattern, you know, that's from all the chronic stresses year after year. Now we can't mount a real immune response. And this is when we start to run into trouble and this becomes the premature aging. And so your thyroid problem is not your thyroid. So what could it be? Maybe it's the neurotoxins or the excitotoxins. Maybe it's because of the estrogen dominance, you know, all the xenoestrogens, the fake estrogens. Maybe it's because of insulin resistance, blood sugar dysregulation. Maybe it's because of nutritional deficiencies and or excess. Um, maybe it's because of the heavy metal toxicity or it could be the liver and biliary uh, stagnation or it could be the, the, the process of the inability to convert T4, what is the T? T stands for tyrosine, 4 stands for 4 molecules of iodine, that is thyroxine, that's the inactive thyroid hormone, so being able to convert T4 to T3. So these could be causing your thyroid problem, not your thyroid, and we're going to look at this a little bit more uh, intensely. So when you go to your medical doctor, does he say, Mrs. Smith, maybe you're estrogen dominant because I put you on the birth control when you were 16, when your menses started to come on and you had horrible menstrual cycles and then we came in with the birth control? Um, maybe your doctor doesn't talk about your diet and all the neurotoxins you're taking in, the aspartanes, the MSGs, you know, so every time we're eating the garbage foods, we're getting these things that excite the nervous system. That's the, the neuroendocrine. We got to start making these connections. Did your doctor say maybe your thyroid problems because your insulin resistance, because you're, you know, you have this, uh, dysregulation of your blood sugar. Uh, did your medical doctor check for your nutrient deficiencies? Did he check you for your metal toxicity? All these things are causing our thyroid to go offline and yet the medical doctor won't look at this. You know, so again, they have that myopic view and they say, oh, this is off, let's put the drug in, let's give you the, you know, the armor, the Synthroid and this is how we're dealing with it. We got to change that paradigm. We got to up our game and we got to understand that these are some of the major causes why your thyroid isn't working. 
So again, we look at uh, look at the toxins we've been exposed to. Fluoride is a neurotoxin. So we're drinking all the processed water, whether it's from the bear. You know, wh where are the bear companies getting their water from? You go get that great organic tea. Where are they? You know, are they using uh, real spring waters? I don't think so. They're all using filtered waters, and so we have the fluoride in there. Remember the halides, we got the chlorine, the bromide, the fluoride, and the iodine. If the fluoride gets in there, it kicks out the iodine. Now, we used to put um, uh, bromide, or we used to put iodine in the flour. And so the iodine in the flour would cause the yeast to rise. We got away from that in the 70s approximately, and we started using brominated flour. That bromide is a very toxic halogen. And that, so now we're not getting the iodine in the flour, so we're starting to get more iodine deficiency. It's not in our diet. Couple that with the bromide that kicks out the iodine. And so remember, T4 is what? T is the tyrosine, 4 is 4 molecules of iodine. And so these compete with the, with the, the halogen that we need. What about aluminum? Aluminum is a nasty neurotoxin. Remember, we're talking hormones, neuroendocrine. We gotta always make that connection. And when we start to get these heavy metals, whether it's aluminum, mercury, or the excitotoxins, the MSG, and all these chemicals, the zillions of chemicals we've been exposed to. You know, did your medical doctor ask you about these? Did he ask you about your diet? Did he, did he check to see if you're mercury toxic? Probably not, because they're giving it to you when they're giving you the flu shot. Um, and, and now we know that the aluminum, they took the mercury out of the vaccines, but they put aluminum in just as bad. So we, so we got to see that these neurotoxins, these excitotoxins excite the nervous system, throwing off the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, uh, thyroid connection. So let's up our game. Now, here we're going to look at just kind of a big picture. Here you have a steroid hormone. That steroid hormone is, is from a cholesterol base. That can be that could be estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, it could be thyroid hormone, it could be DHEA, cortisol, adrenaline, but anyway, it's coming from a, from a cholesterol base. Where is that cholesterol made? In your liver. So in your liver, we always have to remember, all roads lead to the liver, because this is where we're making that very special fat cholesterol. Now this steroid hormone, has to bind to the receptor. You know, so the hormone has to bind to a receptor and it first has to cross this membrane. And when it crosses the membrane, the receptor says, hey friend, come on, attach to me. And then this has to get it into the nucleus. So it has to pass another cell membrane. Once this, once this hormone gets into the nucleus of the cell, then it's going to attach to the DNA and the DNA is going to cause messenger RNA to transcribe the hormone and then the hormone through translation will activate the hormone. So now we have an activated hormone by the binding of the hormone, whatever the hormone is, thyroxine, cortisol, adrenaline, uh, uh, testosterone, doesn't matter what the hormone is, it's that hormone has to bind on the enzyme receptor site and it's got to go through this membrane, through this membrane, and it has to have that lock and key fit for it to bind. And, and then it will activate the DNA and the DNA will transcribe it and activate the hormone. It's a very simple but yet complicated process and when you take, you know, these hormone things, we're not looking at the receptors. We're not really understanding the deeper, bigger picture of how this is really happening in the body. And so we have this thing called competitive inhibition. So here is your normal hormone. It's a substrate. Again, it could be 
thyroid hormone, could be testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, doesn't matter. It's going to go into the enzyme binding site, it's going to fit, and then it's going to go through that whole process of activating the hormone. Now, we have this thing in, in hard science called competitive inhibition. So the inhibitor, what are the inhibitors? That's your metals, that's your lead, your arsenic, your copper, your aluminum, your, you know, your, all your heavy metals, your xenoestrogens, your, your um, uh, neuro uh, excitotoxins, all these things compete for the enzyme binding site and as they compete then they inhibit the actual hormone from getting in and so we call that competitive inhibition and so did your medical doctor when he's assessing your thyroid did he talk about maybe your thyroid isn't working because mercury is getting there you know so mercury is competing and then inhibiting the thyroid hormone so I guarantee they're not checking for that stuff and so this is why we really want to have a uh, a sound approach and not have that you know myopic hormonal view when we're looking at the hormones because this is a big part of the problem when we see our tanking thyroid hormone we're not addressing this and we know mercury loves the thyroid gland mercury is the, the, you know, it's the planet of communication. This is in our throat center where we're learning how to communicate. We're expressing our emotional self, expressing our artistical selves. And so that mercury, when we're not expressing ourselves honestly, then the mercury will have an affinity for that thyroid gland. And mercury loves the thyroid gland and will inhibit the thyroid hormone from getting into the enzyme binding site and then we have deficient thyroid hormone. Again, this is the competitive inhibitor, is able to fit at the active site when it is there, the substrate, meaning the hormone, is unable to bind to the enzyme and the desired reaction does not occur. We don't activate the hormone. The inhibitor and the substrate both compete for the active site. So this is why I keep saying we got to deal with these metals, we got to deal with these chemicals, we got to deal with these toxins if we're truly going to have a fighting chance of restoring hormonal integrity in our body. You know, and again, this, this picture goes a little bit deeper because first we have to understand the cell membrane. First, we got to have integrity and resiliency on the cell membrane. This is the importance of our fatty acids. This is the importance of our antioxidants. This is the importance of sodium and potassium. Sodium and potassium determine the permeability to allow the thyroid hormone uh, to come into the body, into the cell, into the nucleus. Um, so when we have low sodium, low potassium, we have decreased cell permeability. So maybe that thyroid hormone can't get in because of the low sodium, the low potassium. Uh, maybe it's not getting in because we don't have integrity on the cell membrane because we don't have the right fatty acids in the right ratios. So we got to look at the, the big picture when we're talking about hormones. What about that estrogen? This estrogen becomes a major problem with the thyroid hormone. So we know stress increases cortisol. So again, stress is chemical stress, emotional stress, physical stress. So stress increases thyroid hormone. That will increase calcium. That increased calcium blocks the permeability on the cell, decreases the potassium. Potassium sensitizes thyroid hormone to get into the cell. And then this increases insulin. And so as we increase insulin, in, insulin increases the fat. Insulin is the fat storage hormone. And so as we increase the fat, this means that the, the, the fat 
will start to make more estrogen. In our fat, we're loaded with estrogen receptors. This is why we have a population with obesity, you know, and so much weight gain because of these fake estrogens, because what does estrogen do? Promotes growth. If it's in the ovaries, it'll promote cyst growth, fibroid growth. If it's in the, you know, the, the, the fat tissue, it'll promote more estrogen, more fat, more insulin. Um, so we got, you know, this insulin will increase the estrogen to wherever there is an estrogen receptor site in the body. If it's in the breast, then we get the, the lumps, the bumps, you know, the, the, the cancers. So this is where, as we increase the fat, we make more estrogen, decreasing the progesterone and decreasing the prevention progesterone eventually causing all our estrogen related cancers which is the plague of our age so when we're looking at the thyroid estrogen connection it's going to block the conversion of T4 to T3 and I'll talk about that in a little bit it's going to block thyroid hormone. Too much estrogen can block the uptake of thyroid hormone, essentially making it inactive. So did your medical doctor, when he's checking your thyroid, did he say, Mrs. Smith, maybe you're estrogen dominant? I guarantee they don't do this. Um, now, every hormone needs a protein carrier. So it doesn't matter what, the, you know, what hormone it is, but they all need protein carriers. Thyroid's protein carrier is TBG, thyroid binding globulin. That's where the thyroid hormone will be transported throughout the whole body. And so thyroid binding globulin is the protein carrier for thyroxine, for thyroid hormone. However, if you have 20 molecules of estrogen and only a couple molecules of thyroid hormone, it's like musical chairs. There's five chairs, but you got more estrogen, less thyroid hormone. Who's going to get the chair? Who's going to grab that one seat cab called thyroid binding globulin? Who's going to grab that chair? The estrogen does. What does that do? Decreases the thyroid hormone. This is common sense. This is just basic 101, uh, hormones 101. And so uh, we have to be able to see that this estrogen affects it in three different ways and this is why we got to deal with these estrogens, these toxic estrogens, these fake estrogens, these xenoestrogens. You know, so another problem is when we have a lot of gut dysbiosis, poor gut health, we produce this enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. That's a bad marker, it's an inflammatory marker. And when we have this high amount of estrogen, normally your liver, all the estrogens have to be conjugated in the liver. This is why I say all roads lead to the liver. So as we're getting rid of the normal, you know, age-related byproducts of metabolism of estrogen, this can do it very simple. It conjugates the estrogen. We're going to move it through the bile, out through the stool. But if we have this enzyme, this is going to inhibit this process, and then we're going to recycle the estrogens back into the liver, back into the brain, uh, causing a lot of our brain disorders. If it goes to the bones, it's going to weaken the bones. It's going to the breast, it's going to cause the, you know, the, 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 the fibroids, the lumps, the cancers in the breast, or if it's in the ovaries. So wherever there's an estrogen cycle, this beta-glucuronidase prevents the estrogens from being broken down and then they get recycled back to wherever there's an estrogen receptor in the body. This is why we got to deal with the gut infections. So when you have a thyroid problem, did your medical doctor tell you, wait a minute, let's look at why our thyroid hormone is low. Maybe it's because we're plagued with infections. Maybe because we have a leaky gut, an unhealthy gut, poor gut health, low stomach acid, or whatever. So usually they don't look at this. So this is why in functional medicine or functional nutrition, uh, we 
doctors are going to address, you know, the bigger picture. We're not going to have, you know, this tunnel vision. You know, this is why medicine's based in, you know, specialists, cardiologists, endocrinologists, gynecologists. They broke the body into systems, and so that's the only thing you see. From a functional point of view, we're going to see the whole body operating together. Again, when we have that estrogen dominance, that causes progesterone to go low, so on the scale, estrogen is weighing down because there is not enough progesterone. As a result, uh, low progesterone will cause the insulin to go high, insulin will cause the fat to go high, the fat goes high, then it's going to increase more estrogen, more fat, more estrogen, more fat. Um, as a result of progesterone going low, it's going to inhibit the DHEA, that's that amazing longevity hormone, and that will cause our fatigue. What are some of the first symptoms of uh, hypothyroidism? Fatigue, low energy, I have no energy. So this is why we got to understand this estrogen dominance in this picture. And wherever estrogen Estrogen goes, copper goes. They're intimately related. They dog each other. And when you have high copper, depletes the zinc, depletes the magnesium. And then these two nutrient minerals, when they go low, that's going to be a disaster in all of our physiology. So we got to start connecting the big picture so we don't deal with this estrogen until we understand this estrogen copper connection. So we got to deal with the metal of copper. So just kind of big picture, thyroid, um, you know, so your hypothalamus sends a signal to your pituitary, say, hey, we need to make some thyroid hormone, then thyroid stimulating hormone will go to your thyroid gland to say, let's make thyroid hormone. What happens if we have a tyrosine deficiency, an iodine deficiency, a selenium deficiency, a vanadium deficiency, and then you need B2, vitamin C, sodium and potassium to help the, uh, the sodium iodine supporter work. And so if we have a deficiency in any of these nutrients, guess what we don't make? Thyroid hormone. Did your medical doctor check you for those things? More than likely, no. So this is why we like to check these things. And it, like I said, to make that T4, you need that tyrosine. Tyrosine's an amino acid. Where do we get those amino acids? From proteins. To break down the proteins into the amino acid, you need stomach acid. How do I know if you have low stomach acid? If you have low sodium, low potassium, and low zinc, you're not making stomach acid, you're not making the amino acid tyrosine so you don't have the raw materials just from a nutritional functional point of view. We need these nutrient minerals so we can make this thyroid hormone. Now, second half of the problem, once we make that T4, where is that T4 converted? That T4, you know, it, it's, it, you know, it's in that protein carrier, that thyroid binding globulin. Maybe estrogen is taking that parking space, so we don't have the protein carriers to transport it. But that T4 will be converted to T3 where? Mostly in the liver or in the gut or in the kidneys. Again, if we have gut dysbiosis, we're not converting it. If we have stagnant livers, we're not converting it. Um, so did your medical doctor check you for how we're converting T4 to T3 by looking at your gut, by looking at your liver, by looking at your estrogen dominance? And so did they assess the nutrient minerals because you're not going to convert T4 to T3 unless you have adequate progesterone and selenium. So when we're doing a hair tissue analysis, we can assess the nutrient minerals. We get a clear picture where you're at. Then once that T3 is converted, then that T3, you know, as it goes into the nucleus of the cell and activates the hormone, then that hormone, thyroxine, can do its job and increase our energy. It's a beautiful system when it's working, but what happens if we have one example, a copper toxicity? Copper will block zinc, so we don't make stomach acid. Copper will block vitamin C and B2, so we inhibit it there. Copper will block uh, 
this whole process in copper increases the back conversion of T3 to T4. It will block these nutrient minerals, so we got to deal with these toxic metals, whether we're talking about copper, mercury, aluminum, the, the xenoestrogens. We got to understand, if we're really looking at the thyroid problem, we got to look at the many, many causes of why our thyroid gland is not working. What about blood sugar? You know, so when your thyroid isn't working, um, maybe it's because of insulin resistance and you know uh, blood sugar dysregulation. So this glycemia weakens and inflames the gut, the lungs, and the brain, imbalances hormone levels, exhausts the adrenal glands, disrupts detoxification pathways, and impairs all overall metabolism. Each of these significantly weakens the thyroid gland. So when the doctor checks your thyroid gland, says you're, you have aberrant thyroid markers on your blood test, did he discuss your blood sugar? Did he discuss your insulin resistance? This is why we got to have a holistic approach when we're assessing the thyroid gland. And again, um, hormones and nutrients, very important to understand. All our steroid hormones start with cholesterol. And so if we have a deficiency in any of these nutrient minerals, a zinc, a magnesium, a vitamin C, a vitamin E, remember how that copper blocks these nutrients? And then this pathway will become distorted and it will find other uh, non-efficient pathways to make these hormones. But what happens if we're under stress? Remember the stress, the emotional stress, the chemical stresses, the metals, the physical stresses? Then we call that the pregnenolone steel. Instead of pregnenolone going to make DHEA to make our hormones, then the pregnenolone will mostly focus on this very potent anti-inflammatory hormone cortisol. And we know cortisol will decrease thyroid hormone. So this is why we gotta look at the big picture, we gotta understand the nutrients needed, we gotta start connecting the neuroendocrine system, and we can't look at hormones singularly, that's insanity. We gotta look at the whole picture, cause nothing works by itself in our body. Everything has relationships, synergistic relationships, antagonistic relationships. So once we start seeing the bigger picture, then we can get to the root of why our thyroid has become dysfunctional, why we're suffering from the 69 symptoms of having low thyroid hormone. Because again, putting you on a thyroid medication, that's deception, that, that doesn't fix it, that throws off the hypothalamus, and then we gotta deal with all the problems of affecting the limbic system in our brain. Um, you know, coming back to here, when we have, um, you know, insulin will also increase this enzyme aromatase. Aromatase will cause your testosterone to convert to estrogen in men and that's a horrible thing because that will be the weight gain or yeah the weight gain the loss of muscles the tanking libido and so uh, this aromatase is due to the enzyme uh, the enzyme aromatase is due to insulin upregulation causing this enzyme to be turned on to, to do a backflip of turning the testosterone into the estrogen. In women, it will turn the estrogens into the bad estrogens, and then those bad estrogens will increase the fat, increase the tumors, increase the fibroids, increase the acne, because estrogens promote growth. And so when we're looking at the whole picture of our hormonal problem, again, we're not putting it on just one single hormone. We're looking at the whole picture. We're looking at the neuroendocrine system. And so this is why we gotta put it all together and we gotta understand how we're gonna ad address the stress in our body, how we're gonna focus on cleaning up the diets, getting off of 
the, the garbage foods, the processed foods, the, the uh, you know, all the inflammatory foods. We got to understand the communication, our emotional center. Are we expressing ourselves honestly? Have we dealt with our emotional, you know, have we communicated our artistic and emotional side or do we suppress it? As we suppress it, the metals become attracted to that area, especially mercury. Are we involved in getting structural integration because that nervous system needs that spine to be flexible. And so we got to focus on exercises that promote spinal flexibility. Maybe we need chiropractic, maybe we need massage therapy. Um, and of course sleep, if we're not sleeping, none of this will work because all of our adrenal hormones, sex hormones, uh, thyroid hormones, all need this in harmony and we also have to fix the gut. We got to deal with that leaky gut. We got to deal with that stomach acid. We got to make sure that we have, you know, we're, we're focusing on the candida, the fungal infections, and all the gut dysbiosis and the parasites. Because again, remember that thyroid hormone is converted in the gut in the liver, in the kidneys. And so if, the, if our gastrointestinal tract isn't working, we're gonna have a poor time converting inactive T4 to the active T3. So we gotta support detoxification. We gotta support the liver. We gotta support you know, the colon and the whole gut. And we gotta support the kidneys and the lungs. So this is why we look at the body from a whole. So it's just not, you know, m you know my thyroid, is the problem. Your thyroid is the problem because of the chemicals, because of the, the xenoestrogens, because of the poor gut dysbiosis, because of the blood sugar dysregulation. So this is where we got to connect the dots. Or we have nutrient deficiencies because we don't have selenium to convert T4 to T3. Or we don't have the raw materials to make thyroid hormone. So that's kind of the big picture of uh, the, the message I wanted to portray is that you don't have a thyroid problem, you have a neuroendocrine problem, you have a heavy metal problem, a xenoestrogen problem, a gut problem. And when we address the totality of the body, now we can get our hormones working a lot more intelligently without you know, this falsity of taking these uh, drugs that actually become very detrimental to the long-term health of us. So that was kind of my quick presentation on the thyroid and why it's really not the thyroid and I hope, uh, you know, it made sense to you but if you have any questions, get back to me. And I encourage you to get counsel, mentorship, and guidance on your healing journey because we need to know about the biochemistry. We need to know how to detox heavy metals. We need to know about aggravations that we may experience as we're dumping a metal. Um, this is important stuff and so what I want to do is, is offer you a 20 minute consultation over the phone to discuss if my program is right for you. But to qualify, you know, a few uh, criterias have to be in order. First, healing has to be on your A list, not your shopping list, not your to-do list, not your bucket list, but it has to be on your A list. If healing isn't on your A list, don't waste your energy, don't waste your time, don't waste your money. Um, thirdly, you got to take accountability. I heal nothing. I'm going to mentor you, guide you, and counsel you uh, on your healing journey. I'm going to keep an eye on you. I'm going to monitor you know, your program when we need to increase nutrients, decrease nutrients, come in with homeopathics, maybe uh, recommend other therapies to get you through uh, a speed bump you may hit. So. You gotta take accountability because healing is between you and God. I guide you on that journey. And so if you fit this criteria, please fill out the long health intake form. Email that back to me. Once I receive the long health intake form, we'll set up a, a mutual time where we can have that 20 minute phone consultation to discuss if my program is right for you. So again, really appreciate you taking the time for watching this video. 
and thank you. We are winners, champions of the light, forming in numbers and might. Keep the truth close inside, and woman.